A great article I read in the Sydney Morning Herald uh, yesterday by uh, Sydney Swan uh, Brandon Jack. Uh, King hits assaults uh, show moral sense uh, skewed by um, uh, a violent culture. Uh, it's a really interesting uh, read to touch on that and just how the swans are travelling. Uh, Brandon's been good enough to take a call here on uh, Summer Breakfast. Brandon, uh, good morning. Morning, guys. Nice to talk to you. Um, obviously back into the, the full swing after Christmas, uh, training resuming this week. Yeah, so we started back on, on Saturday and had a, had a pretty tough hit out then and we have a pretty tough session today as well, so everything, everyone's going really well at the moment. Excellent stuff. We'll uh, maybe talk about Sydney in just a tick, but the article that you've written here, Brent, I'm just going to read just a, a couple of sentences to uh, sort of try and paint a bit of a picture for our listeners. In the aftermath of the latest senseless street violence, we instinctively seek someone or something to blame, uh, yet pointing the finger at the aggressor in each case won't bring any change. Um, the legal age, of course, for alcohol consumption is 18. You talk about uh, you know singling out binge drinking, which uh, fails to recognise the underlying factors that uh, result in a punch being thrown at an innocent uh, bystander and we you know we think about just general things that happen here in Melbourne and you know obviously soccer and what's been happening with uh, some of the violence uh, in and around games uh, here Brandon what made you write this article can you just, uh, give us a bit of background yeah so there was a mo- there's a recent attack on a young 18 year old Daniel Christie in in the King's Cross on New Year's Eve and it was just a number of attacks and I guess that kind of just pushed me to the point where I really felt someone of the generation it, it involves had to say something and there was a number of articles that came out that I thought were just narrow in their approach and just blaming alcohol or, or blaming one thing. But I think what we had to look at was the the people who threw the punch and the mor- the, moral, the, mar- the moral issues that they have. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, I think that there's a pertinent point in, in what you've uh, written here in regard to uh, alcohol. Um, if so, then why doesn't every intoxicated person do it? Put simply, some of us are more morally adept than others. And, you know, one of the big talking points, Brandon, down here has been just the behaviour of a small minority of uh, fans, not only who go to the soccer, but whether they go to the cricket or the footy, who mm. just take things to another level where things uh, totally uh, get out of hand. So, Really, this is not about um, this is about drinking. This is about just your general morals as a person. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. So there's a lot of people who, who go out and drink, and the large majority of them are, are safe under the influence of alcohol. I've got friends who I completely trust, but then there's just a small group who, who probably just can't have that same sense of reason when they've had drinks or just in general. And, and I imagine... You know, being a footballer with a, a bit of profile and you're out and about and, you know, footballers uh, sometimes can be in the wrong place at the wrong time. And you've obviously, you know, as a young man growing up as well, you know, seen a lot of this stuff firsthand. Yeah, so I've had I've had friends who've been in this situation and I know it's not pretty and I know for their families it's, it's a very hard time to go through. So it's something that I just think really needed to be addressed and, and the fact that I I do have a small profile albeit at the moment, it's just gave me an opportunity to have a voice that can be heard. So, Brendan, to prevent the, the so-called coward punch, I mean, what are your views on that in, in continually trying to educate people? Yeah, well, I think the, the solution, well, it's not a definitive solution, I, I understand that, but just my thoughts that if if we can teach kids with math, math deficiencies or who struggle with English in school to become better at that through tuition and education, then the same can kind of be applied to how we teach morals to kids and ethics and the kids who don't understand the a sense of reason or what actions befit a certain situation, we can we can try and educate them to see that. It's obviously something you're you're quite passionate about. I imagine you know, footballers obviously link themselves across their career to very good uh, causes, and I imagine a few of your teammates would be, you know, similar in thinking uh, regarding uh, the general society around us and, and the generation. Uh, and it's something I imagine you're going to, you know, spend a, a bit of time outside of footy uh, trying to really connect with uh, even more going down the track. Yeah, so it's good to see a few of the few of the Swans boys have jumped on board. I think Dane Rampey wrote a small piece as well, so. It's good that I think we're we're starting a conversation and conversation can help bring about change which is which is inevitably what we want. But as you said, it, it is good to have have something outside of football and you can't just be football all the time, otherwise it'll wear you down. 
Absolutely, absolutely. It's a really good read. If you want to uh, jump on the uh, Sydney Morning Herald uh, website, uh, published and written by uh, Brandon Jack, that was uh, yesterday in uh, the paper. You can certainly catch it online, just talking about uh, general society and uh, in the aftermath of the latest uh, senseless street violence, um, you know, instinctively seeking someone or someone else to blame and actually probably looking at ourselves more in the mirror as uh, people and, and our morals and how we actually conduct ourselves uh, out there. You mentioned uh, training uh, back underway. I've been sort of getting people's uh, top eights, uh, Brandon, in the last uh, few days and uh, there's sort of one certainty every year that we as football fans from the outside looking in is so we always sort of pencil in, uh, in Sydney into the top eight and it's, I suppose, been a true testament to the consistency of the team. But it, I suppose it's been a pre-season of change, hasn't it, with you know some players leaving... Uh, and, and some older players as well, and Lance Franklin uh, coming in. Has it got a different feel about it heading into 2014? Yeah, well, obviously there's been a, a few list changes at the club, but I think what we showed last year is we've got a real good young group coming through and it doesn't really matter who who's pull, pulling on the jersey. We, we trust that they'll play the role they're given. So even to the the new guys like Lance at the club or Jeremy Laidler, we, we really trust that they're going to do their role and think we can have a real crack this year. And just on, on Lance Franklin uh, and how he's settled into his new surrounds, obviously uh, he's got plenty of publicity up there in uh, Sydney, but just within you know, the inner sanctum of the group, uh, has he sort of been accepted? Yeah, he's fitting in really well. I think most of the guys or all the guys really like him and he's been training the house down, so that's really good to see that he's, he's trying to make a good impression on everyone. And in your story, mate, as someone who calls the footy here at SCN, uh, you know, we've loved uh, watching you developed and obviously admired your brother enormously for his work ethic in the middle and uh, his you know, really, you know, spiritual leadership of the Sydney Swans, uh, along with Dan Hanabry and so many others who just really symbolise what Sydney's all about. So your brother's obviously been a great role model to look up to, but I imagine now you feel pretty comfortable in a system that really demands that every player pull in the right direction, that Sydney culture, which is so uh, profound. Yeah, so I do get a large a large influence from my brother Kieran, of course, but within the club there's a number of guys, senior guys who I who I look up to. So you got like other co captain Jared McVeigh, Josh Kennedy, mm. Ben McGlynn. There's just so many guys who you can who you can turn to and, and just learn from. Yeah, and for you, what are the, sort of the goals you've set for, for 2014? I mean, you can never take your, your place for granted, can you, on an AFL list? And you've always got to be looking to, you know, improve every year and, and really solidify your spot. Uh, yeah, that's exactly right. So for this year, I'm just, I just really want to play as, as many games as I can to, to try and cement a spot in the senior side, where last year I was in and out towards the back end, which I think I can I can try and fix this year and just to develop my game to another level again and, and make finals, obviously, as a team. That's the goal. Absolutely. Uh, really good article, uh, Kieran. I mean, I, I can't read it word for word here. People can certainly go on and uh, have a look, but the, the message is, is there for society in general to uh, really look at the way they're uh, conducting themselves and, and not blaming others and, uh, and using uh, alcohol as, um, as, a, as an excuse. So, uh, yeah, we'll uh, certainly read more of that uh, throughout the morning. Uh, Proudly Sydney is the slogan for 2014, so if you're an old South fan, Sydney fan, you can head to uh, sydneyswans.com.au to become a member of the Swans and be part of the red and white uh, culture. All the best with pre-season. Nab Cup not too far away and uh, look forward to seeing the Swans in action. Thank you very much.